everybody, you're watching me, Christiana321. I am me, Christiana, and I figured we'd do just a quick bonus video for Valentine's Day. And it is the Valentine's book tag. Um, I'll link the person down below who started it, but I heard of it from the book basket. If you're watching this and you like book videos, go give her a follow. She's still like uh, pretty new on YouTube as far as followers goes. But I've been watching, or I've been following her, mm, been following her on Instagram for a long time, and she's got some great content. Also, she has an accent that is Australian, South African. I don't know, but it's really cool. I I can't identify accents. Uh, but so I saw her do this tag, and it made me want to do it. So here we go. Am I, was I supposed to wait and see if I got tagged? I don't think I got tagged. Why didn't you tag me? Any, I'm just kidding. Um, and feel free, I'm doing it with books, but honestly, all of these topics you could also do with movies. So I might also throw in some movies that fit these. All right, number one, your favorite couple ever. And I know that this is super basic, but Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy. I don't like any of the movie adaptations of Pride and Prejudice, um, but I did really enjoy the Lizzie Bennet series on YouTube. Um, I thought that was great. And then I've also read a few different adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. And the Lizzie and Darcy characters are always my favorite. Um, I love that they are flawed in compatible ways, but they also like help each other grow. And honestly, Darcy is just my type. Um, they like, I don't know, strong type that is, uh, will fix things in the background and then not realize that the reason that you're, you don't appreciate what he did is because he did it all in the background. <laughs> uh, just, yep. And then, uh, yeah, so cute. The relationship that never happened. This one I struggled with. Number two is the relationship that never happened. I will enunciate properly. The problem with this one is I have a terrible memory, so there's a chance that, uh, you know, whenever I think of relationships and books and who I'd want to get together, A, most of the time they do get together, or B, like maybe they got together at the very, you know, end of their connection for a short period of time or something. Um, but I'm pretty sure these two never actually romantically got together. If you've read this book more recently than me or you just have, you know, a, a good memory, please correct me down below. Um, but Alaska and Pudge. The main character is Pudge. Uh, he goes to a boarding school. This is Looking for Alaska by John Green, his first novel, published novel at least, and it is so good. John Green has some bangers. I love his writing. Um, I know it's YA and YA is not for everybody, um, but of all of his novels, Looking for Alaska is my favorite. It's his first one out. It was not the first one I read. I'm pretty sure that it was the fourth one I read actually, but I read it all in one sitting. It was so good. Java, don't knock over the camera. Uh, sorry about that, you guys. Uh, you are kind of precariously perched and she bumped into you. Anyway, Pudge gets sent to boarding school or goes to boarding school willingly. He's got a weird obsession with last words. Anywho, there he meets this lovely lady named Alaska and Java. Um, they become friends and she is kind of a manic pixie dream girl. Like that's what it seems like she's going to be when you first meet her, but she's got a lot going on, um, other than just how she affects Pudge. Uh, and and yeah, so then stuff happens in the book and I'm not going to spoil it. But 
you should read it if you like YA. It is kind of sad. Anyway, number three is your crush, your literary crush. And I, I, Mr. Darcy is up there. But you know who else is up there? You know, you know who, who else might be, might be making a slight, slight appearance? Mr. Sherlock Holmes, of course. I am, I love Sherlock Holmes. Got a lot of great adaptations, a lot of great uh, stories. But the Benedict Cumberbatch one is my favorite. Um, however, Robert Downey Jr. one, disgrace to the character. Love Robert Downey Jr. Don't get me wrong. He just wasn't a very good Sherlock, in my opinion. But the brains, the like, um, the brawn, the, he's definitely very, um, damaged. All of that, my take, for sure. Now, some people subscribe to he has only uh, been in love with one woman ever, the woman, you know, if you've read the books, you know, or the stories, short stories. Some people believe that he really only ever had eyes for John. Some people believe that, well, yes, he was only in love with one woman, but he was also in love with one man, John Watkins. However, not Watkins, Watson. Uh, John Watson. I personally believe that he's asexual. I don't think that he was attracted to anyone, um, especially the BBC version, the Benedict Cumberbatch one. Here's the thing though. I do believe that he was able to feel romantic love and that he did feel romantic love for the woman and people who are asexual. Sometimes it's very difficult to know if what you're feeling is romantic love or friendship love and so I think probably John Watson was also very close to um to a romantic love interest if he wasn't actually that's just my opinion feel free to disagree and yell at me in the comments um if you watch my video about what I did on uh social media on tumblr um I'm very familiar with the John Locke shipping um, but personally, I only ship Sherlock with me, and that's fine. Now, the worst relationship is the next one, and that, there's a lot of contenders, right? There's abusive relationships, there's ones that end in divorce, there's manipulation all over the place, especially in, like, fantasy books, you know? Um, and so I kind of have a hard time labeling worst because, well, the relationship was terrible, but it was entertaining to read, or the relationship just, like, didn't work on paper, it didn't make any sense kind of thing. Um, and there were a few of those out there. It was really hard to uh narrow in on what one to pick and then i remembered i read the postman always rings twice which it's a novella um set in the 30s 20s um this guy is not a not not a good guy uh is traveling and stops at this place for work gets a job, uh, and then starts having an affair with his boss's wife. Which, you know, not great, but, you know, there's plenty worse things that happen in books. And then they come up with a plot to kill him. And then additional terrible things happen. And it's told uh, from his point of view, I think. I don't remember if it's third person or, yeah, okay, third person, right? Third 
There's a lot of dialogue and so I'm trying to find a bit. Uh, yeah, okay, first person. There we go. So it's written in first person from Frank's uh, perspective. Uh, Cora is Frank's boss's wife for most of the move or most of the book. And he's just not a good guy. You can blame some of it on just the time that they were uh, that this was written. There's a lot of racism and a lot of racial tensions in America. It still are, but you know seems to be better than it once was. I need to find a bit. Oh, uh, better than it once was. I'm very nervous. Is she gonna go in the bookshelf? There's not room. Gonna knock stuff off. Okay, you go on the windowsill. I don't know, you guys. But, yeah. Neither of them were particularly good people. She wasn't super fleshed out either. Um, and that might be partially because you're seeing it from Frank's perspective and he had a very stereotypical 1920s view of women. Uh, but yeah, nope, not good. Lots of people died. Kind of like uh, Romeo and Juliet. A couple teenagers get crushes on each other and all of a sudden six people are dead. Not quite that many, but there was, oh, and the law, oh my gosh, they tricked this guy. It was, it made me mad. Um, these last two, I don't read a lot of romance. I wouldn't even call, mm, I guess Pride and Prejudice is kind of a romance. I, I just don't. Um, and when I do read it, I don't remember very much of it. It's like a rom-com kind of thing. It's great. I enjoy it while I'm reading it, and then I just uh, forget everything about it. Anyway, um, so the next one was Favorite Love Triangle, and I don't really have any. There's love triangles in um, Divergent. There's love triangles. Is there a love triangle? I don't know. There's love triangles in all of the dystopian books, it seems like. Um, uh, Hunger Games is a big one. I, but I genuinely don't enjoy love triangles. It just seems messy, which I guess is the point of a book. You need plot. But it never seems worth it to me. Um, I guess the only exception is Luke, Leia, and Han. Like, that one worked out because two of them found out I mean, no spoilers, I guess. Anyway, so I, I did take a little bit of a liberty with the favorite love triangle. That's what I'm trying to say. And also, I don't have the physical book where this one is. So I've got The Hobbit to represent the Lord of the Rings series. Um, I've read, I forget now, one or two of the uh, Fellowship of the Ring series. Uh, so my favorite love triangle is between Frodo, Sam, and the ring. And I, I don't even know if you can really call it a love triangle. It's more of a love arrow because Sam doesn't really want to have anything to do with the ring, I guess. Um, and Frodo's kind of a dick to Sam. Sorry, a uh, Richard. Um, just like not very nice. And but a lot of that has to do with the ring, and Sam uh, is able to see that, you, you know, his friend is still in there. Is it a romantic love? I'm tempted to think so. I don't really think J.R.R. Tolkien uh, intended for LGBTQIA representation in his novels. Um, just what I know of him, it doesn't really seem like something he would be aligned with, uh, especially, but also in The Hobbit, I don't think there are any named female characters. Like they had to add in, um, 
the elf, the female elf. What's her name? I don't know. In the movies, just because otherwise, it was just kind of kind of a sausage fest, you know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, J.R.R. Tolkien wrote excellent stories. It just wasn't excellent for representation. Um, also, the orcs, uh, like if you read into it with a certain racial inequality lens. Um, we're not talking about that. We're talking about love stories. Frodo loved the ring. Frodo loved Sam. But the ring corrupted him because it was a manipulative boyfriend. And eventually Sam was able to, like, save Frodo. And, like, everything worked out because he didn't stay with his toxic partner with the ring. Um... I guess it has more to do with Gollum. I mean, I did think about putting Gollum Schmeagle in the ring, but I don't think that Gollum and Schmeagle really loved each other. They seem to fight a lot. Anyway, the last one is also um, not quite romantic love story. So the last one is favorite favorite tragic love story. And there are, I mean, there are plenty of examples of tragic love stories that are about romantic love. But the one that whenever I was looking at my shelves jumped out at me as my favorite, the like most impactful to my life uh, when I read it was The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly. Um, but it wasn't a romantic, well... There are several themes of tragic love in here. The one that I first thought of was between her and her friend, the duck. Um, and that was really interesting. And I'm not going to do any spoilers as to why it was tragic. Um, but their uh, friendship really spoke a lot to me. And then... But also, like, tragic love story between her and her eggs. Um, if you've heard me talk about this before, the hen is a... Um, the main character is told basically from her perspective. And she is an egg-laying hen for a farm. So they never let her have any chicks. She just lays her eggs uh, and never they've never had a chance to be fertilized so if they're just eaten because that's what you do with unfertilized eggs anyway this makes her really depressed that she never gets to like take care of her eggs and it's very sad and then eventually she does have an egg to take care of um but it's not a chicken and so i guess it's kind of a spoiler not really a um it's kind of early on in the, the plot of the book, but there is a bit of tragedy in the love between a mother and child as the child grows up, especially if that child um, is just really different from you. And how much do you hold on and try and make it, you know, uh, more like you? And how much do you let it go its own way, um, the way that it is naturally inclined? The cat just jumped on my leg in a way that was not ideal. Um, there's not very much room on my lap. Anyhow, um, I don't know why we're ending on a tragic love story. It was a very beautifully written book. I, of all of these books... I would recommend all of them. <laughs> this one was really good. Pride and Prejudice. If you haven't read Pride and Prejudice by now, like, I feel like you just don't want to. And that's fine. It's not for everybody. It is beautifully written, and I enjoy it very, very much. And it's been a few years now since I've read it, so I feel like it's time for me to read it again. <sighs> Should I do a read-along? 
I now have several copies of it. So I could do, like, take one of the copies and, and like, tab it. That might be fun. Anyway, Pride and Prejudice, definitely recommend. The Hen Who Dreams You Could Fly, definitely recommend. Looking for Alaska, if you're into YA, 100% recommend. It has been banned from um, a few different schools around the U.S. because there is some material in here that is uh, a little bit more adult. I read it when I was in college, so it didn't phase me at all. Um, but it's definitely PG-13. I would venture to, for me personally, it was probably more like PG-16, just based on who I was as a teenager. Um, so if you're a young person, maybe check with your parents before you read this one. But it is very good. Uh, of course I would recommend Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. But that's another... Well, see the great thing about Sherlock Holmes is most of it is short stories. So you could... And most of it you can read in pretty much any order. There's a couple of recurring characters that you'd want to, you know, follow their story arc. But for the most part, you can read any of them as standalone, any order, and you'll be fine. Um, the first canonical one is the Letter in Scarlet? Is that what it's called? A Study in Scarlet. Um, which is a longer one because it, it's more of a novella and then yeah, there's some short story ones in there. Anyway, um, so if you want to just start and you don't know, you're not somebody who reads all the time, definitely just pick up, a. thank you, Java, <laughs> pick up a copy of the, the series and read them here and there, whatever you're feeling bookish. Uh, then, what are the last two? Oh, The Hobbit. I recommend The Hobbit. I'm not a big fan of the Lord of the Rings books, the, like, the Fellowship ones. Uh, I re it might be because I watched the movie first, Java. Um, and so that might be on me. But, I mean, I, I watched The Hobbit first, too, and I still really enjoyed the novel version of it. I don't know what it is, but no, I don't, I don't like the Lord of the Rings books. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, and this one, I don't know if I recommend it still. It's been months and I can't decide if I would recommend this because I hate everybody that's in this book. Other than maybe the boss. There, there's some, like, characters that you meet one-off that I guess are okay. Oh, and then I forgot about... I hate all of the main characters. They're all terrible. And so it makes me really angry, but it's really short. And... Uh, if it's your kind of thing to where you like to read about terrible people, I know some people that that is... That's their genre, is just people being terrible. I think it was called like a noir romance or something. Um, the uh, Roman noir. I don't know what that means. Um, but they also compare it to The Stranger by Albert Camus. Camus? Whatever. Um, so if that's the kind of book that you like, go for it. I, I don't know where I stand on the postman. Always oh, rings twice. I'm also really mad. There's no postman in the whole book. Why? Why is it called this? Nobody knows. I could look it up. I'm not going to because I'm just going to be mad at it. What books have you been reading? What is your um, answer? What are your answers to those questions? They don't have to be books. They can be movies like... My favorite, mm, my favorite tragic couple 
is Christian and Satine in uh, Moulin Rouge. My favorite um, three um, love triangle is uh, in Chicago, the the musical. Like if we're just going like movies and musicals and stuff, um, in Chicago, Velma Kelly and Roxy Hart and Fame. I know it's not a typical love triangle. I don't care. Um, that one's just fascinating and like kind of an interesting character study because then they just end up in a throuple at the very end. Sorry, spoilers. That movie's been out for a very long time. It's got Queen Latifah in it and a bunch of other lovely, lovely people. Uh, Renee Zellweger, Catherine Zeta-Jones, um, others. <laughs> Uh, the lawyer and the reporter are both played by famous people. Richard Gere? Is that the uh, lawyer? Anyway, um, so what are your answers to the questions? Um, go follow the book basket if you enjoy bookish content. And that's all I got for you. Thanks for hanging out. I thought this was going to be a really short video. And then I just did not shut up. Good night, sweet dreams. And I'll see you tomorrow for a vlog that is not Valentine's themed.